So, and the purpose of what we're about to do is so that when I finally go ahead and decide I got a path, a diagnostic path to go down, and I get out, I get my fat butt out of the driver's seat here and open up the hood, I know where to go. I'm not just shooting blind, so to speak, trying to figure out, well, it's running rough. Let me just go ahead and, I don't know, start by whatever I'm going to do, you know, start by doing a compression test or whatever. So I'm going to, once I do that and I open the hood, I might say if I thought it was, we used it earlier as an example, if I thought it was an engine mechanical problem, there's a lot of ways we can do it. We can do a manual compression test, right? And that could, could be a go or no-go style test. Then I could do like a cylinder leakage test. But let's say, let's say we're all beyond that in our, in our careers and we say, hey, there's all kinds of cool, sexy, new type of stuff out there with transducers and everything else. Well, all of it's going to get me the same test results. So, you know, there's a couple different style transducers that I could use. And this was, this was a real popular thing. And from as long as I've been in the training industry, it's kind of, a, it's kind of comical sometimes because pressure transducer testing, if you subscribe to Motor Magazine and Motor Age and all the different trade magazines, every once in a while the whole industry just embraces a test and it makes it sound like it's the, it's the newest test and everybody should be doing it, right? So, and that, that happened a few years ago with pressure transducer testing. And there was all kinds of training classes and stuff on in-cylinder pressure transducer testing and then taking this thing and hooking it up all over the car and everything else. Two types of, of transducers. And there, it is a valid test. But for instance, I am, as a business owner, everything I do, I have this liability thing in the back of my head, right? So if I wanted to know what the compression of a vehicle was or whatever, and it happened to be a Ford Triton three valve engine, do you think I want to risk, not that I can't fix it, but do you think I want to risk taking the spark plugs out of that thing to screw a, a, a compression gauge inside there? I'm not going to do that unless I absolutely have to, right? So that's what I mean by common sense. If I open the hood and it was a Triton three valve engine, I'm going to be like, this isn't the tool I'm going to use. I'm going to use a different type of tool to get the same type of test results here. So there's two types of pressure transducers out there. There's a pressure transducer like this, which can go anywhere. I can put it in the exhaust pipe. I can put it in a vacuum hose. I can put it inside a, a, an actual combustion chamber. Or they've got the other style, and this is just a homemade one that I did, which is a piezoelectric crystal. Now, piezoelectric crystal, for anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about, there's a knock sensor on a car, and a knock sensor it's one and only purpose in life is to detect noise, right? And the computer strategy and all this stuff is constantly working. We'll talk a little bit about computer strategies about halfway through this program. But the computer strategy is if I sense a knock, I'm going to go ahead and retard the timing to help prevent this engine from blowing a hole in the pistons, right? And the knock is created by confronting flame fronts and all that stuff. Or it could be a bearing problem or whatever. So that's a theory behind it. But another strategy that's built in is that's another input for crank mode on a lot of cars. So if I had a knock sensor and I saw my RPM was relatively low and I was wondering, I wonder if this car is running or if it's actually cranking, if I was a computer wondering this, when I'm cranking the car, it's a very noisy environment. Think about it. You got a starter motor engaging into a flywheel and there's a lot of noise going on. So if it sees that, a low RPM, and it sees this knock sensor going crazy, it knows, hey, we're definitely in crank mode. So <clears throat> the piezoelectric crystal actually will create its own voltage. So if I were to hook this up to a scope right now, and I just give it to somebody and you just scream at it, you would get a signal on your scope screen. So this is a homemade one. The real professional one is this one. And I, I call this the piezoelectric crystal style sensor. And this is made by a company called First Look. And this is a couple hundred dollars, right? You can get all the parts you need to make yourself one of these for about $25 and you could put it together. And you'd have the same exact type of tool here. So if we're doing any kind of tests and you say, boy, I don't happen to have one, I'm not telling you go out and buy this. I'm telling you, if anything, I'm telling you just build one and it's going to save you a lot of money. So this type of transducer, I can put anywhere on the car except for in the combustion chamber because the combustion chamber pressures are too, are too high and it's going to just destroy the piezoelectric crystal. 
All right, and that's the same reason why when you put a knock sensor on a vehicle, there's a torque spec. If you over torque it, you crack the crystal in it, and then it becomes super sensitive and you got all kinds of drivability problems. Those are the six main inputs that I'm looking at. When I get out of the driver's seat, I have an attack plan, and then I'm gonna use a little bit of common sense. I'm gonna survey the situation and say, what makes the most easiest sense to get the diagnostic test that I'm after here? So with all that being said, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna take a step away from the, the actual slide presentation right now and I'm gonna hook up a scan tool. I'm, we're gonna have two different types of scan tools hooked up in this, in this presentation. We're gonna have a generic scan tool that does some stuff that no other scan tool, to the best of my knowledge, does for us. And I'm not telling you to go out and buy that tool at all. I'm just gonna show you what's available and then I'm gonna show you how you can get the same information with a couple more steps with whatever scan tool you happen to have. 